Welcome to the first part of three episodes on this series, Trail Running in the Heat. I'm Alan, coach and sports scientist at Two Peaks Endurance. Many times I read on training peaks from athletes, oh, too hot, or I don't run well in the heat. Well, good news. Our bodies are very good and fast at adapting to running in hot and humid conditions. Also, there are strategies for training and race day for you to perform well. Before we can investigate these strategies, we have to consider and understand how our bodies deal with hot in conditions and how our bodies regulate temperature. During running, only a fraction of the work you do ends up propelling you down the trail. The vast majority simply gets generated and liberated off as heat. As a result, our bodies attempt to maintain an ideal core body temperature of around 37 degrees. During exercise, our body temperature increases from 37 degrees. Once we reach core body temperatures of around 41 degrees and above, our bodies slowly start to shut down, causing cramps, dizziness, and nausea. After 43 degrees, our body's proteins actually start to break down, and we have extreme thermoregulatory impairments such as heat stroke. Essentially, we start to cook ourselves. When your body temperature drops, your body's vessels constrict. Keeping warmth near your core to protect your vital organs and you begin to shiver to produce heat. However, when your body temperature rises, your body blood vessels dilate, sending more blood to the surface of your skin to remove and liberate off that heat from your body into the environment. Furthermore, sweat glands are activated to provide water for the evaporative process. The environment you're running in is directly impacted by four categories of heat transfer. Conduction is where you have direct transfer of energy. For example, your foot hitting the ground or you touching a hot object. Convection is where air or water is moving over your skin. For example, when you're running, the air movement takes away the sweat from your skin. Radiation is the direct or indirect transfer of heat in the form of electromagnetic waves. And of course, the most common example of this is the sun. And finally, evaporation, the conversion of liquid into a gas. Together, these methods of heat transfer help to keep you cool. So, let's look at these four methods specifically for trail running. Conduction is the most uncommon problem for trail runners. While we have conduction during ground contact time, with our feet, any pro heat produced here is protected via the shoes we wear. Radiation is most common from the sun. We want to limit as much time as possible in direct sunlight. If you're running along a wide trail or gravel track, select the side with the most shade and protection. Convection and evaporation are two best ways of cooling yourself down on the trail. During trail running, the convective process can be a little easier than road running. Trail running is normally conducted on nature trails, alongside cool rivers and in the mountains at a higher altitude. This results in cooler air temperatures than flat or city-based locations, making it easier for wind and air 
to take away heat. Finally, evaporation can be a problem for trail runners. During trail running, a backpack is commonly required to carry essential liquids, foods and gear. This means heat can sometimes struggle to be released, specifically over your back. Furthermore, rain and wind jackets can also reduce or blunt this mechanism. In this graphic, you can see as workload increases, so does the total energy output. When we add all of these mechanisms together of total temperature regulation, you can see it does not take away the total heat produced. Therefore, we must reduce our total energy output in order to limit the amount of heat stored in our bodies. We do this by reducing our pace so exercise intensity is reduced. So, key points to consider. There are two main factors when exercising in the heat. The heat you produce and the heat you are exposed to in the environment. Maintaining a balance or equilibrium between heat gain and heat loss is critical to success and performance. Next time, we will consider how our bodies acclimatise and adapt to running conditions in hot and humid environments.